In this video, we're going to talk about terminal velocity, particularly the concepts that relate to it. So let's say if you have an object at some height h above the ground, and you drop it, you release it from rest. Initially, there's only one force acting on this object, and that is the weight force. So as soon as you drop it, the vertical velocity is zero. However, gravity is going to pull this object down, increasing the vertical speed. So as this object begins to fall, its vertical speed is going to increase. The vertical velocity might be negative 4 meters per second after some time t. The weight force is going to be basically the same. But as it begins to fall, it's going to encounter air resistance or you could call it air drag. So here is the object and here are some air molecules that are in the way. As this object falls, it's going to push fluid out of its way, in this case the air molecules. So it's applying an action force on these air molecules and according to Newton's third law, for every action there's a reaction an equal and opposite reactive force. So this reactive force that the air molecules exert on the object, that's the air resistance, the air drag. We can call it or describe it as lowercase f. Now this air resistance is dependent on the speed of the object. So the faster that the object is falling, the greater the air resistance will be against that object. So as the vertical speed increases, air resistance is going to increase. Now it's going to keep increasing until it equals out the weight force. Once the weight force and the air resistance are equal, the net force is going to be equal to zero. And according to Newton's second law, the net force is equal to ma. So if the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. And when the acceleration is zero, vy is no longer increasing. Whenever the acceleration is zero, the velocity is constant. So vy has reached its maximum value. In this case, vy is now equal to vt. So that's the terminal speed. When we use the term velocity, keep in mind velocity can be negative, but speed is always positive. So the vertical speed becomes the terminal speed when the weight force is equal to the air resistance. So here's a graph that describes Vy as a function of time. So this is going to be vertical speed as opposed to vertical velocity because vertical speed is always positive. And this right here is Vt, the maximum value that the vertical speed will achieve if it's under free fall. So the curve looks like that. Vy, as it falls, it's going to increase until it becomes Vt, its terminal speed. So that's the basic idea behind the concept of terminal speed and terminal velocity. Now let's talk about the equations that we need to calculate it. So here we have the weight force and here we have air resistance. The net force is going to be the difference between these two. So it's F minus W. You could do it the other way around, you'll still get the same result. Now, when the vertical speed reaches its terminal value, or its end value, its terminal speed, we know that the net force is equal to zero. There's no more acceleration. The acceleration in the y direction is now zero. So we can replace the net force with zero. So once we achieve terminal velocity, the weight force is equal to air resistance. The weight force is mg. Now, 
the air resistance or the air drag, there's two different values that you need to be familiar with. At low speeds, it's directly proportional to the velocity. So I'm just going to put low V. At high speeds, it's proportional to the square of the velocity. Now, when dealing with objects in free fall, these objects can fall fast. And so they can easily achieve a high velocity, which means we'll typically we'll be using this equation for objects in free fall that can achieve a high velocity. But first, let's calculate the terminal velocity using this form of the equation. So let's replace it with kV. Now, this V, it's terminal velocity because the net force is zero. So I'm not just going to replace with V, but V sub t. So you know it's terminal velocity. In order to get the terminal velocity, we just got to divide both sides of the equation by k. So the terminal velocity is equal to the weight force divided by k, which is a proportionality constant. So that's how you can calculate the terminal velocity for situations at low speeds. Now, what about at high speeds? So let's just rewrite this equation here. So at high speeds, we're going to replace F with dv squared. Both d and k are proportionality constants. Now I'm going to solve for v. So I need to divide both sides by d. So I get this. The only difference though is I need to take the square root of both sides. So at high speeds, the terminal velocity is going to be equal to the square root of the weight force divided by the proportionality constant d. Now this proportionality constant d depends on a few things. It depends on the density of the fluid through which the object is moving through, in this case air. So this is the symbol rho. That's the density of air. It also depends on the projected area of the object. So for instance, let's say if you have a ball falling, the terminal speed for this ball might be pretty high. It could be 90 meters per second. Let's say if you have a person skydiving, his area is greater than this ball, so the terminal velocity is going to be less. It could be 55 meters per second. Now, if you have a person that has a parachute, his terminal velocity is going to be much lower. It could be, I'm just going to give a number, it could be 4 meters per second or something. The reason for that is the area of the parachute that's interacting with the air molecules as he falls is much greater than this ball or this person as he skydives. So as the area increases, there's going to be more air drag. And so that's going to decrease terminal velocity. So when you increase the area of a fallen object, this proportionality constant is going to increase. These other things we can't change. We can't really change the density of air. And this is the drag coefficient, so there's not much we can do with that. But we can change the area. So if we increase the area by using the parachute, the proportionality constant increases. And the fact that it's in the denominator of the fraction, whenever you increase the denominator of the fraction, the value of the whole fraction goes down, which means the terminal velocity decreases. So that's the one thing you can do to decrease the terminal velocity of a fallen object. It's by increasing the area of that object. 
as in the case of employing a parachute. Now, if we replace D with what we have here, we can get this form of the equation for terminal velocity. So it's equal to 2mg, the 2 comes from the half, 1 divided by half is 2, over the drag coefficient times the density of the fluid, in this case air, times the projected area. So you can also use that equation to get the terminal velocity when you have objects falling down at high speeds. Now let's work on our practice problem. So we have a 75 kilogram man jumps from a plane and eventually at some point he reaches a terminal speed of 55 meters per second. So let's draw a picture. So here he is jumping off a plane. And we want to find the acceleration of the skydiver when his speed was 40 meters per second. So let's draw a free body diagram. Here we have the weight force and we have the upward drag force. The net force acting on the skydiver is going to be the difference between the upward drag force and the downward weight force. Now, let's start with terminal speed. At terminal speed, we know the net force is equal to zero. So add in W to both sides, we get that W is equal to F at terminal speed. We know the weight force is mg, and the speed is pretty high, so F is going to be equal to dV squared. Now, this V is terminal velocity or terminal speed, so it's V sub t squared. What we want to do first before we calculate the acceleration is we want to determine the value of this proportionality constant d. So we have a mass of 75 kilograms, the gravitational acceleration is 9.8, the terminal speed is 55 meters per second. So it's 75 times 9.8 divided by 55 squared. So our proportionality constant, D, is 0.24298. So let's save that. Now that we know the value of D, we can calculate the acceleration at 40 meters per second. Keep in mind, the acceleration at terminal speed is going to be zero. But we want to find the acceleration before he achieved terminal speed. Not at 55, but at 40. So that's going to be some number between 0 and 9.8. So we're going to start back with this equation. At 40 meters per second, he's going to have a downward acceleration. We need to find out what that is. So we're going to replace the net force with ma. F is still going to be dv squared, and the weight force is going to be mg. So all we have to do is divide both sides by m. So the acceleration is going to be dv squared minus mg over m. So this v is not the terminal speed. It's just the vertical speed at a certain point in time, in this case, 40. So we have our d value, which is 0.24298 times v squared. So that's going to be 40 squared. And then minus the mass, which is 75 times g. That's 9.8 divided by the mass of 75. So the acceleration in the y direction when the vertical speed is 40 meters per second, it's negative 4.616 meters per second squared. So that's how you can calculate the acceleration if you know at a certain speed, but you have to figure out what the proportionality constant is before you can do that.
So now let's move on to part B. Calculate the force of air resistance on a diver when his speed was 35 meters per second. So the force of air resistance is simply dV squared. So d is 0.24298 and the speed is 35 meters per second. So the force of air resistance is going to be 297.65 newtons. Now, part C, what would be the new terminal speed of the skydiver if he was wearing a backpack that weighed 15 kilograms? So if we put a backpack on him, it's not really going to change the area upon which his body interacts with the air molecules that he's pushing against as he falls. So adding this backpack for the most part is not going to affect the proportionality constant to a significant extent because it really doesn't change the area that his portion of the body of his body that is in contact with this you know the air molecules below him and it's not going to change the density of air so for the most part this value is going to be relatively constant so the only thing that's changing is the total mass of him and the backpack so to calculate the terminal velocity, we can use this formula. It's the square root of mg over d. So we're going to plug in the new mass, which is 75 plus 15. So that's 90 kilograms times g, 9.8, using the same proportionality constant, 0 So the new terminal speed is 60.25 meters per second. So when dealing with terminal velocity, there are two key factors that can affect it. If you increase the mass of the object while keeping everything else the same, the terminal speed is going to increase. The second thing is the use is increasing the area let's say if you employ a parachute. If you increase the area, the projected area that's in contact with the air molecules, if you increase that, this is going to increase the proportionality constant d, which will decrease the terminal velocity. So those are the two things that you can adjust for the most part for objects in free fall. These are the two things you can adjust to either increase or decrease the terminal velocity. You can increase the mass or you can increase the projected area.